Thanks, Donald. Thank you. Um, I was born not far from here, about two kilometers of those in Ladion. Um, and I wanted to say that I'm very proud and honored to be here today. Ted, TEDx is well known worldwide, and I thought it was a very good initiative. And if you don't believe that I believe what I'm saying, I'll let you know something. Yesterday was my 49th wedding anniversary, and I elected to be here. <laughs> All of you are welcome to come to my funeral next week in Geneva. It'll be about Thursday, I think. Thursday, Friday. It's okay, you can come. One of the biggest problems Europe and the rest of the world faces today is unemployment. Unemployment means there are people who would like to work, but they have no capacity to work because there are no jobs. Instead of putting food on the table and ensuring that the family can go to universities and so forth, they take money from government in order to exist. There is nothing more soul-destroying than wanting to work and you cannot work. Um, and governments don't know how to make money. They're not designed to make money. They're designed to spend money and not necessarily wisely. So, consequently, a lot of young people are out of work. And what we have throughout the world, actually, we have a high rising uh, crime. Crime is rising at an alarming rate because the young people, they have nothing else to do. I selected the topic of uh, an ideal business plan because through job creation, can only happen when an entrepreneur like you, like everybody else, starts a new business and has a capacity to grow that business and provide work so that people can spend the economy um, uh, benefits because we give money, we pay taxes rather than taking money from the government. So I'm going to talk a little bit about this. The business plan I'm talking about are things that I've done all my life. Nothing of what I say is lifted from a book or anything. There are my own views. You may agree or disagree. However, whatever I say, I'm going to say it under one condition. That if I say something bad about businessman or politician or something, it is a true statement all over the world except your own country. Yeah? In other words, if I said politicians are bad, they are bad all over the world except Greece. When, when the Greek government goes overseas, they applaud, they see them as role models. Huh? If you are if you're British, that means Mr. Cameron and Mr. Corbyn and Mr. Farage, they are perfect. It's just the rest of the world is rotten. Under this environment, let me, let me go very fast because I have very little time. Uh, they don't give me much time. 18 minutes, I can't even spell my surname. Um, <laughs> I bought a company, a, bank, a twice bankrupt company, in uh, Switzerland, that's where I live now, for $948,000. My venture capitalist, who gave me the money, um, appointed five advisors, experts. All of them told me, do not do it. I said to one of them, why? He says, you are Greek, aren't you? I said, yes, and I'm very proud Greek. And he says, yes, but you don't know anything about technology. Do you know about banking? I said, no, I've never been near a bank. He says, you're going to fail. I said, okay, thank you very much. I also told him that I don't speak French, which is the truth. I understand a little bit, but I don't speak it. So they turned around to one another and said, il est fou, il est malade. He says he's crazy, il est fou, crazy. He's sick in the mind. It, it is impossible. Now, I've been married to the same woman for 49 years. I don't know what I've done wrong, but it is a true statement. <laughs> with my, yesterday. Guess what? When my wife talks about something that I have strong views against it, I've, I've created a, a medical condition where something happens to my eardrum, there is a membrane coming down. I, I'm going to see a doctor before my funeral, only to find out what the hell it is. I just cannot hear anything. So I didn't listen to them, I did exactly the same thing. I said, fine, thank you very much for your advice, I bought the company. I renamed it Temenos, I get inspired, by things that I cannot explain right now. That's one of them is, is the names. I don't have a company called George Cookies. Uh, Temenos. I had no credit lines, no overdraft, not one dollar, even to this day. 
That's a lesson for the sovereign debt that we have. Countries borrow money to pay the interest. We cannot, not only Greece, eh? Italy is pretty bad, but United Kingdom. I had no debt whatsoever. We did well, we will invest. I have a 20-year plan. If I show you my business plan, it hasn't got one number. I never said to my people, I want to make a million profit. Never. All my position about a business plan were statements that I cannot right now because of, of lack of time explain to you. Fast forward. The company I bought for less than one million. I took it public six years later at 1.4 billion. In other words, if you put a thousand euros there, you will get 1.4 million. 1,400,000. Today, the company is worth multiples of that. I'm talking about then. Um, but more than that, more than uh, making money, Temenos is number one in the world, as the, uh, the gentleman before said. Number one in the world. No matter what you look at, every independent survey, we're number one in the world in the industry we represent, which is computer system for banks. Successively, year after year, we win awards, we do a lot of things. So, and we were number five at some point in time in corporate governance, which came about year, around 2008. So, how do you go from bankruptcy to be a dominant player? The player was, when, when my company had zero revenues, the, the giants were a minimum of a billion dollars. And now they're only about 20. Let me go through now uh, something, and I hope I can part my messages in a clear way. There's expectations and there is reality. We're talking about life. What is reality when somebody starts a business plan? Everybody who starts a new business, they want to be successful. Basically, they want to be Steve Jobs, huh? Bill Gates, whatever, whatever you. Once you start a business, reality sets in. This is real, eh? This is reality now. It's not some highfalutin uh, philosophical statement about life. In Europe, we have 175 bankruptcies a year and growing very fast. 50,000 of those are in France. So much about bankrupt ideological doctrines and useless management. 50,000 bankruptcies there. That means 680 bankruptcies per working day. It's frightening. Forbes magazine published this report the other day. 90% of startup business go down. In other words, if I look at 10 business plans, only one is going to work. In my own experience, it's much higher than that. And when I took the company public a couple of years later, when um, the financial conditions were pretty bad, they said that only 50% of the listed companies, the companies on the stock exchange, would survive. And I was faced with, will I exist, will I not exist? So let me go through the business plan. Another contributor to that is, is that it's like life, business. Business is common sense, it's not something magical. I don't know banking, I don't understand technology, so what? There are a lot of people who do. It's a matter of how you manage these expectations. Life is all about you fall in love, you get married, you have children. You, you're not prepared for what the, the issues are going to be a few, a few years down the track. So business is the same thing. You want to open new offices, make money, invest, innovate, do things and then reality set in. That happened to me two hours after I got married, in the afternoon. <laughs> I got married about 12 o'clock. That's reality now. Then let me tell you what the rules are. <laughs> Thank God. Um, that's reality. Economy falters, cash flow problems. One of the most dangerous things of any company that you have a good business model is that you run out of money because you grow and you don't have enough money to support that growth. So you either have to uh, borrow or do something. A lot of entrepreneurs they don't want to give up shares in the company and they end up losing, um, losing the company. And what happens? Divorce. Divorce. And who gets killed? The king, <laughs> not the queen. <laughs> um, <laughs> another aspect of business plans and life is perceptions. This is not mine. This is a, a Mexican artist. If I ask you what it is, and I can ask you right now, I'm not asking you, it's all rhetorical. You don't have to answer, sit there and relax. I'll do all the answering. Um, if I ask you what that is, you'll say faces, prosopa. And indeed, that's what it is. Come a little bit closer and, and look at that. And it's not a face whatsoever. Yeah? 
For far away, it looks like a, a beautiful woman. It's only three birds trying to feed their the chicks. And that is not another beautiful face, it's just two squirrels. In life and in business, what happens is you start with a, we start with a particular concept, something changes, something changes, and then you are faced now. I've made all the decisions, I'm the decision maker. That it's a, it's a face of a woman, and I see it's a mountain, it's a bird, it's a, two horses, and all you see is the hooves. A lot of companies don't have the capacity to, to readjust, or it's too costly, or you, and you don't have enough money to do that. So, let me give you a practical example of this perception, because perception is, is reality for some people. These are two headhunters in Papua New Guinea. First time in their life, they went to the city. They have no idea. They've never been near a city. The, the lady says, what's an elevator? He says, the decision maker says, I have no idea. Then a woman comes along, she presses a button, and two doors open, there's a metal box, she goes in. The next thing you see is that there's some lights flashing. They have no idea what is an up arrow or down arrow. The doors open, and the collapses, <laughs> lady comes up. Guess what our decision maker does? He says, wife, you next. <laughs> because that perception. This is real, this is real. Don't try, trust me, my wife pushed me into one of those things, nothing happened, <laughs> nothing changed. Another contributing factor is the environment. You will not disagree with anything I put up there, and you don't have to read it. Poverty, literacy, problems all over the world, geopolitical con conflicts, wars. If you were to listen to that for a week and then you build you put a business plan together, it will be a pessimistic business plan. If you spend a day with me, none of this will have any influence on your business plan. So how we feel about the world around us, and I must admit, because I'm coming here quite often, I find it very difficult to see how some people can run business in, in a place where there is no good management. So the environment does affect us. If I ask all the people in the world, and I can ask you, if you agree with this, what is the one thing that I can change, that we agree, that we're going to improve the world at some level and we're going to increase the quality of life? Again, you don't have to answer it. That is short-term mentality. Our world suffers from an evil disease. It's called short-term mentality. Okay? What that means is I make decisions for a very short period of time. I did say I had a 20-year plan. When you make a decision on a very short time basis, you have the following effect. Look at what are the three pillars in any good functioning society. Politics, business, to a lesser extent now religion. Hundred years ago, if I said what I'm saying here, I would have been burned on a stake. Eh? Yeah. T today, they're less relevant, but they have a lot of money and a lot of power. And of course, you can use terror along um, those, those concepts and do some damage. But politicians throughout the world, except your own country, okay? except in Greece, they make decisions, maximum next election. Business people, quotas, bonuses, everything is geared to either EPS or something. So they penalize a good company sometimes. They don't invest to be successful in the long term because they want to grab money and run. Look at all the, the bankruptcies. Look at Enron. Look at the Royal Bank of Scotland, Parmalat. Rife with, let's grab as much money as possible. Tell me something. What would Greece be if somebody said, I want Greece to be this in 200 years. What decisions would you make? Totally different from what, what I've experienced the last 60 years. And it's got nothing to do with political beliefs and stupidities. One is worse than the other because they have no philosophical base. And one of the byproducts of that is that we, I, if I ask the seven and a half billion in the world today, what is success, they will say money. They will say money, the majority of them. If money is the only criteria of success, why don't we all become contract killers? Join the mafia, peddle drugs, be a politician. They, they never go to jail anyhow. I mean, it's safer. If you wanted to be a millionaire, you come to me right now and say, I want to be a millionaire. I said, okay, when? Tonight. The only thing you can do that is by doing something criminal. I will not do anything criminal, period. I don't give a damn. You can give me all the gold in the world. The shorter the time frame, in a business sense, the most criminal the decision. To me, a successful business plan has four or five maximum criteria of what success is. 
In other words, you and I will agree, I'll give you the money, you have the idea, we'll agree that in one year time, we're gonna say, did we achieve this? If you did this, and you concentrate only on that, you will make more money than you ever dreamt in your entire life. But you never targeted money as an objective. Money should be the consequence of success. I get inspired by, by things like the following. First you dream, then you believe in that dream with every pore in your body, and then you watch it happening. These are not my words. These are on the tombstone of the gentleman who invented the, the Zeppelin, uh, the airplane. This is even closer to me. I get even more inspired. This is Michelangelo. He said, we don't set our targets high and we allow ourselves to miss it by a little bit. We send them very low and we achieve them. In other words, I could have said to my venture capitalist, I'll give you a company worth a, billion, a million. I produce a company that does 1.1 million, and then I expect a knighthood from Queen Elizabeth. I expect to be treated like a hero for being average. And our society, unfortunately, remunerates mediocrity. Don't worry, I'll pay you. You don't have to work. I'm okay. They, they, we don't train them to be successful. When you operate the way the Michelangelo and uh, von Zeppelin talks about, is you create so much positive energy. You affect, positively affect other people around you, but you create other traits within yourself that are priceless. Your mind listens to what people say. You pick and choose and make the right decision because you are a winner. You don't, you don't worry about something not working. You can always recover. It makes you tenacious. It makes you never to quit. I've seen a lot of young people, students, who say, oh, this is difficult, I don't want to do, mommy, no, 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 no. Work hard, never quit, and you create a determination and a capacity to solve problems that you thought they were unsolvable. So the roadmap, very quickly, as to what you should be doing. Number one criteria is that you decide to do good things. If you're thinking of going into business, you can apply that to your personal life, by the way. You decide to do good things, only good things. You create jobs and you feel good about this. You create products that they have some usefulness, not the La Moya thing that the, <laughs> the, the, the subprime, the, what is subprime? If somebody smart sold the product that it's useless, it's got nothing. He made money, nobody's been questioned by the way. Yeah? The greatest crime, it got us into the financial crisis that we're today. To be a good citizen. If you don't contribute towards society, um, then the society will not trust you. You don't trust society and at the end, like Greece, the government doesn't trust people, people don't trust the government. And whatever you do, you need your product, your business must not be bad to Mother Earth. We drink water from bottles, soon we'll be breathing air from ox oxygen bottles. Uh, we have poisoned waterways um, to make money. I was offered to buy a very large area in Latin America forest to, to, to cut it down and make a lot of money. So. What did I do? The membrane came down, I said, go away. I'm not listening to you, go away. I'm finishing. The next one is accountability. Accountability for me is your business plan, you believe in it, you get there and you do it. If something doesn't go wrong, accept the responsibility, because whether it works or not, it's always the dreamer's responsibility. I've seen, I spend a lot of time with entrepreneurs. What I'm trying to establish is, is he a winner or is he a loser? A loser always complains, my parents were too tough. Oh, there was not a university there. My, it was raining, I missed the train. There's always a blasted excuse. It's always somebody else's fault. Who told you that in life you'll make decisions that will be gonna be perfect? You can't be perfect like me. You have to accept that you're human, yeah? Oh, Lord. Uh, and uh, losers always quit, eh? I'm not gonna do this, it's too hard. And they do other things. Time frame. Think long term. When you think long term, everything becomes very clear. You, know, you don't know how many people came to buy Temenos for peanuts in the early days. Again, it's good to be married for a long time to the same woman. I tell you, I said, go away. I'm not listening. And finally, leadership. Leadership with integrity. What is missing in our world is ethical leadership. I started a program, I'm not going to talk about this right now. Um, but leadership cannot exist along with fear or guilt. If you are a leader, you have to be forceful. You have to, you have to say, this is a good way, I've decided that I'm doing good things, I'm going to go down that path. Fear is not a physical thing. Fear is not a dagger or a sword that waits there to, to kill me. Fear only exists because I accept it, like superstition. 
Now you get a number 13 here. The Chinese don't like number 4 because it sounds like death. Say, it's the same thing as death. Somebody else likes number 7. Hey, basta, leave me, give me a break. There are numbers, the poor guys. Eh? But we have religion, stupidities. People make money out of these things. No, you as a leader need to be fearless. You, you, whatever you allow in your body to establish itself as fear or guilt, it will consume you. You become a slave to that concept. So you have to be, you have clarity of thought. Understand something, even if you're the most idealistic person in the world, you will be tempted by corrupt, money and power corrupts most people. It takes a lot of strength to say no to some of these benefits. And finally, innovation and greatness is within you. Like the other person said, but you are Greek, you cannot do that. Being successful or being anything is not a birthright. I'm finishing. <laughs> I've got my wife, I think, with Pamela there. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, I will finish in two seconds. So greatness is not a birthright. It doesn't mean if you're born in Liladion, you cannot be well, but you have to be born in Ataki to do well. And human history has taught us that all the leaders that you see up there, the change in the world did not come from political parties, ideologies, or bankrupt ideas. It came from a single individual. So target in your business plan to be great. Have love for freedom. Don't accept mediocrity. Don't accept limitations, because the limitations will make you average. Have incorruptible integrity and the final thing is why here a little bit it's a word that doesn't exist in a lot of other languages the, the capacity to do the honorable thing without any regards to cost or sacrifice and if anybody in the process says you're crazy just remember like mozart you may be closer to greatness that you never dreamt thank you very much